Helmet anywhere near him. Headlock launches. Maypre inside his five. And Maypre with a good return and then gets dropped by Ray Marius back out of retirement. And he has been a welcome addition back. The veteran Tiger Cat linebacker with a special teams tackle. Now this Hamilton secondary, Chris, has got to shake a bad play. I mean, the the big touchdown throw to Eric Delorier, Corey Chamblin's group's got to now settle down. It's a young group back there. And the key here is to not allow one mistake turn into two. So now Carlos Thomas got to settle things down. Now, will they show a lot of zone defense and get organized? Brandon Whitaker sets up at wide receiver. Kerry Carter stays in. Calvillo swinging for Richardson. And he's got it. They follow the football and then ends up with plenty of extra yards. But it starts out, Chris, with D. Webb giving Jamal Richardson lots of room. And again, when you've made a bad play in the secondary, this is natural to go ahead and give the receivers more room on the next series because you don't want to get beat deep again. So it starts out that way with D. Webb giving Richardson lots of room underneath. Go ahead and run it. Now, Richardson gets a little lucky after the catch, but look at the cushion that D. Webb gave him. That ball came out, bounced right back up to him. 26-yard pickup, first down. Whitaker, inside run. Dropped at the 42-yard line. There's Jamal Johnson with another tackle. All kinds of time to trade touchdown marches yet. So no panic in the defending champions huddle. And we have not mentioned Justin Hickman since the first quarter, Chris. And again, I keep going back to it because it's so difficult. Chris Schultz will tell you how tough it is to change from one side of the old line to the other. It's been Jeff Parrott against Justin Hickman all game. pressure on Calbeal. He can hesitate and make sure that S.J. Green clears the linebacker. Watch him on the play action. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Then he's clear. Now he can dump it off to him. One guy has to be beat. That's Bo Smith on the play. S.J. Green picks up first down territory. Ten yard gain for S.J. Green. Carlos Thomas, the safety shaken up on the play so Bill Collins will come in to take his spot it will be Milton Collins the former Calgary Stampeder Tiger, their linebackers in tight. Look at Jamal Johnson in tight. There's Ray Williams all the way to the other side of center. That's going to allow the leverage for the Alouettes to get outside, whether it be Brandon London, whether it be Brandon Whitaker, S.J. Green on the last play. As the linebackers keep moving into the interior of the defense, they're using the outside edge. First down and Whitaker short yardage inside. And there's your answer, Chris, as to why Jamal Johnson, Ray Williams are so concerned between the tackles because of number two. Seen some good looking drives for Montreal today where it's as if they have these sequences planned and this has been this punch formation drive, although not in it here. Second and almost 10. Richardson uncovered. Off 
14 yard touchdown strike. And we're a point after away from being tied at 37. Protection, protection. Calvillo gets pressure from his left. Hamilton going with the corner blitz and Marcel Young picked up well enough to give him time to go to the field in a wide open Jamel Richardson. He asked us yesterday, who are they going to put on me at crunch time? Well, they didn't have anybody on him there. The game is tied. This play has been run before by Hamilton. What Here is Marcel Young. They're also going to bring a little bit late Jamal Johnson. But watch Whitaker here. He's going to also get some help from Eric Delorio. He will come down. Go ahead and run it, guys. Here comes the blitz. Okay, stop it there. Picked up nicely. Brandon Whitaker in good position. Jeff Parrott has taken Luke Mullender out of the play. A defensive end right there. Protection on the backside on the blitz. Allows Anthony Calvillo to go to the field and hit Jamel Richardson. That was the play that Hamilton got the sack from Jamal Johnson earlier in the game. They didn't get it that time. That time, AC gets the touchdown. Come on, man. Let's go. Hey, he said I know. Hey, he said I know. 74 points on the board and far from over. Defending Great Cup champions not willing to go down. Big Penn again trying to set things up. And a run out near the 35. Walter Spitzer, special teams demon for the Alouettes with a tackle. And it will be Kevin Glenn. So Porter got the job done when Glenn was knocked out of the last Ticat series. But the starter's back in now. How resilient are the Ticats? We've seen how resilient the Alouettes are. There's Colbert out of the backfield. He gets the edge. And Igor Colbert is across the 50-yard line. Boy, he is not running out of, out of bounds. Avon Coburn is going to take the fight to the Montreal Alouettes. And this is this is what Marcel Belfay talked about. This is what Sarah Oleski before the game talked about in her head, saying that he was brought in for more than just offensive production on the field. Avon Coburn was brought in for veteran leadership. And they need a drive right now to respond to that Montreal drive. And they started with number 22. Avon calling for 18. Darcy Brown, the fullback, has the catch. By the way, with that last touchdown drive, Anthony Calvillo in this game has thrown for 406 yards. That is a career playoff high for Anthony Calvillo as he continues to set milestones and records, both personal and otherwise. And he's going to need even more today. But that might answer some questions about whether or not he has more in him at age 39. Give him time, and he will dissect the defense. Darcy he, Brown has a first down for Hamilton. Just continues to maintain his focus, not involved right now with what the defense is doing. Separate himself from the rest of the team to go over his next play package on the sideline. Question might be today. Who gets the ball last? Absolutely. In the Montreal territory, first down, Alouette 48. Williams on the sweep. The 35-year-old veteran in his 11th year slams the door on Chris Williams, drops him for a three-yard loss. Anwar Stewart has to beat the double team because the, the Hamilton Tiger Cats put tight end Darcy Brown outside of him. Should have had leverage there. Anwar Stewart, this is film work. 
Tim Tebasar knows he's got a veteran that can beat a well-designed offensive play because that should have worked for Hamilton with the tight end outside of the defensive end, and Anwar Stewart sniffed it out. It's loud here. Second down. And that ball over the head of Thigpen, who was turning as the ball went by his ear. And the tight cat drive stalls. Second time for, for Marcus Thigpen that it's about recognition, play recognition. And, and Thigpen has got to realize Blitz is coming and that Kevin Glenn won't have a lot of time. So he's got to get his head around quickly and find the football. Because he was open. So now Medlock, who has not had a great punting day, looks to pin. Nate Bray's going to field this at the seven. Cover team does its job. Dropping May Prey. That's a 52 yarder by Medlock and Kevin Scott down in a hurry to make the tackle. Safety Carlos Thomas back in the game for this defensive series for Hamilton. But the chess match between coordinators here, certainly offensive coordinator Scott Milinovich against Corey Chamblin. The Hamilton Tire Cats has been just a great example of how your game plan, both offensively and defensively, has got to continue to evolve. How to pick up pressure, how to make those adjustments necessary. Now let's start inside their 10. Calvillo, underneath Whitaker. Short gain at the 12, but the heat was on Calvillo at his goal line. Carlos Thomas, after that play where Eric Delorier got behind him, has now backed out of there and is almost 25 yards deep before the snap of the football so that he does not give up another big one. Look at Jamel Richardson wide open over the middle. Now, Calvillo didn't have time there, but don't think for a second Scott Milinovic hasn't seen that and may go back to it. Jamal Johnson, the tackle, second and five after the... Whitaker catch, big play. Calvillo flushed. Now throws it. The pass incomplete. No flag, and Richardson gets up thinking there should have been. Now they're not sure he's not wrong. Yeah, I think he's got an argument. However, there is no flag, and the Alouettes have to be composed here. Mark Tressman told us in their two losses during the regular season to Hamilton, they at times lost their composure. Now, I think you're right, Chris. Jamel Richardson has an argument. He was turned by Carlos Thomas there, but no flag, and they all almost lost it. Brandon London went up and down the official. And now Sean White standing in his end zone. Williams awaits near midfield. White's kick. There's Williams at the 51. For the first surge, steps out of the Alouette bench on the Alouette side of half. 46 yard punt. Seven on the return with under three and a half minutes to go. And the Tie Cats in this tie game have field position advantage. Boy, and they're in that, that point where you gotta believe, you gotta take advantage of this kind of field position right now. Because you know with the veteran Anthony Calvillo, quarterback who has thrown for more yards than any quarterback in pro football history, he's going to get another chance. He's going to move the ball again. It's time right now for the tie cap. Out of a double tight end formation, that pass complete the flat. There's Chris Williams, who has had a significant in impact in the second half after a shaky debut in his first playoff game in the opening half of play seven yards play call made by Kahari Jones so it's a one for seven second half second down conversions a big one upcoming lots of choices here could even run the ball here
touchdown to Belton Johnson, Simeon Rotier, and Mark DeWitt, the right side of the offensive line. And they're the ones who are gonna spring up. Look at that right side. He hits the hole full speed. They wash out that side and look at the hole for Avon Coburn. And Bakari Grant on John Bowman on the back side gets away with a bit of a hold. Yes, he does. Headlock had to double clutch there, but puts the extra point through. Is not enough. It's a reason why I'm me. Holla at me. <laughs> He's exactly who he thinks he is. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Coburn. That's a good one. Well, he spoke to the team prior to day two, and he has spoke volumes here today. That touchdown going to stand up. Tim Maypray up to the 30-yard line. Let's join Sarah Orleski. Chris, yesterday I spoke to Avon Coburn and asked whether or not there was pressure on this offense to put up a large number of points. This is a team that was 1-10 in 10 in the regular season when they didn't score at least 30. So what did he do before that last series? He came up to me, pointed to the scoreboard and said, you see that? We got at least 30. Then he goes out there and adds to it. It's currently 44-37. He does like to call his shots. And there, I guess there's a reason he's he, him. And there's a reason why Hamilton signed him. Yep. Ball in your court, AC. And away goes SJ Green. Up to the 50-yard line. Let's go back, because you heard Avon Coburn say, O-line, holler at the O-line. Look at this, as they just slide down, and then Bakari Grant will come in here, and he'll pick up the trailer the backside guy in John Bowman so slide to the right Rotier DeWitt right here great block at the point of attack and on the backside a bit of a hold but right there in the line of scrimmage you'll get away with that more than you won't here's Calvillo in trouble under duress scrambling and completing the brand of London mentioned only once this year Brandon London over 50 yards but he has been a regular target here today with five catches uh, check that four catches of over 10 yards and that one worth another seven at, so the, at the end of that play Chris Anthony Calvillo talked to Brandon Whitaker about his protection issues there second and three out of the backfield is Whitaker dropped by Bo Smith. When we talked to AC yesterday, he felt that most of the problems in BC initially were because they were not getting Whitaker out of the backfield as a second or third option. Well, they can get him out of the backfield if they can get their tackles blocking the way they need to be. And right at the top of your screen, Jeff Parrott is going to be one-on-one -on -one again on Justin Hickman. 13 sacks on the season, and we haven't heard from Hickman today, this afternoon. Lots of time again. from the side that he wants to throw the football and that was his left to S.J. Green who does the rest. White to tie it again. If you joined us late, you'll be able to catch this on ESPN Classics one day. What a football game it's been and We've still got a lot left. Oh, we we do. And I just want to show you this game that's been going on. Justin Hickman hasn't been able to get pressure, so occasionally Corey Chamlin will drop him and get him underneath any throw or drop him wide. This time, no, Hickman doesn't come on the blitz or on the rush, and he doesn't drop either. So he's really covering nobody here. No pressure in the throwing lanes, Anthony Calvillo. He doesn't get underneath S.J. Green outside, and there is absolutely no pressure there. It 
allows Calvillo to hit it to Green, put it right on the money, and S.J. Green does the rest, cutting back. Second receiver inside, Brandon Bre uh, Brian Braden brings his split right down to give him some room and see if Hickman drops here and at least gets in the passing lane, it may be a little more difficult over the throw. He doesn't. Too close to the line of scrimmage and yet not rushing. Out of the grasp of D. Webb, but into the end zone. And now the tie caps have two goals to score. They will leave nothing on the clock. Big pick. Oh, they'll give him field position. Let's find out where they rule he stepped out. Mark Tressman was concerned about Thick Pitt's returns today, and they have been a factor for setting up Kevin Glenn with great field position throughout. Well, that's huge. And that that's a, a big run. Kevin Glenn now three first downs away from a field goal. Does not have to deviate from his game plan at all. Bahari Jones can keep Avon Colburn involved and success on first down. The next three plays, three or four. First downs here are huge. three-yard line, so that's close to Medlock Range, a 21-yard pickup, but a reminder, following this Eastern semi, we will head to Commonwealth Stadium. Battle of Alberta, John Cornish, and the Calgary Stampeders beating the Eskimos. Bakari Grant has arrived in this semifinal game, Chris. Big blocks in the running game, big catches. the 39 before we get too far ahead here Anthony Calvillo over 500 yards passing that's the second most in playoff history the most by a Hamilton Tiger cat Tony Curcillo back in 1956 show you that catch by Bakari Grant one more time it's crunch time comes back to the ball uses his hands strong hands over the middle Stays in bounds at the 32. And Alouettes will stop the clock, I believe. And there's really no reason, would you think, for the Tie Cats to put the ball in the air again? Just wondering why, Chris, the ball went back to the 40 yard line. In their original line of scrimmage. I, I think the, the officials may have blown this plate dead. Wow. Timeout, Hamilton. Now the Climber. Cats take a timeout. Please reset the clock to read 42 seconds, please. No, they've got, two on the clock. they've got the ball. Well, you're right. They've got the ball marked second down at the 40. So that play did not take place. In the din here. Ticat's not perturbed by it. The crowd noise may have drowned the, the whistle by the officials, and that play didn't count. There have been four lead changes in the game. Four times the game's been tied. And they put it back to 42 seconds, second down and six. And it is a first down and a clutch one by the kid who really has bounced back here second half it's a great story the first throw of the game to Chris Williams he dropped it was a deep one and it took him a whole quarter to come back Montreal. and get his confidence back but in crunch time when they absolutely had to have that first down he goes one-on-one -on, -one on Seth Williams on the back side and Williams can't cover him much tighter and comes up with a big catch now that takes and gives the Hamilton Tiger Cats a chance to run this clock down before they go for the game-winning field goal and not give Anthony Calvillo any time after Justin Medlock attempts it. That would be advisable. A 
team that has frustrated its hardcore fans in the hammer. For mediocrity. I don't know about a shotgun snap here. Nothing there. Chris, I don't know about a shotgun snap in a deep handoff that deep behind the line of scrimmage. Well, you're taking a bit of a chance that if Mark DeWitt is off in any way, shape, or form in his shotgun snap, you can cause a problem. You're well within Justin Medlock's range right now. Look how far and deep that Kevin Glenn is. If that snap, let's say, just rolls back to him and there's a fumble, they lose this opportunity. That's a deep handoff, too. They're going to do it again. Second and all, Colbert cut down immediately. Big yeah. play there by Eric Wilson. And so it comes down to this. Justin Medlock, so reliable this year. And perfect on the day. Looking at a 41-yarder to send Hamilton to Winnipeg. And the one thing about that deep handoff is it did allow Colburn to get the ball close to the middle of the field for Justin Medlock. Sean White is in the end zone in case Taking too much time. 